Good evening and welcome to the Midland Book Board of Education's regularly scheduled meeting on May 14th, 2012. Mr. Wasserman, would you call roll, please? Gladly. President Malt. Here. Vice President Wasserman here. Treasurer Oley. Here. Secretary Baker. Absent. Member Branstadt. Here. Member Gorton. Here. Member Kaminsky. Here. We have six to seven. We have a quorum. Thank you. Before we move into our consent agenda, we have for information uh, 2.1, uh, Midland County Educational Service Agency. Uh, yes, they uh, called uh, late this afternoon and requested that they uh, be removed from the agenda. So I would suggest that we have a board member make a motion to table this item until our next meeting on uh, Tuesday. I believe the date is May 29th. Yeah, thank you. Uh, move we table this to the next board meeting at the request of the ESA. Support. Moved by Mr. Wasserman, supported by Mr. Olick. Any questions or comments? If not, we have a motion on the table. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. It has been tabled. From that, we'll move into our consent agenda. Does anybody uh, have anything that they'd like to have removed from the consent agenda at this time? If not, seeing none, we'll start with uh, 3.1, which is the uh, minutes from the tw April 30th, 2012 MPS uh, board meeting. 3.2 is the following staff members are, uh, announced their resignation. 3.3 three is the approval for request to purchase hardware and software to upgrade our current finance information system. 3.4 is the district staff curriculum development committee recommended 23 proposals listed below, uh, totaling 146,985. 3.5 is a study committee of administrators from the central office in both high schools submitted their uh, change to the commencement participation policy. 3.6 is the uh, approval of the uh, legal bills for the district uh, for the month of April. Move approval consent items 3.1 through 3.6. Support. Moved by Mr. Oley, supported by Dr. Kaminsky. Questions? If not, we have a motion on the table. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We have requests to address the board at this time, um, and I know that we have a couple of people that have signed up, and I'm, uh, if you want to go ahead and. You just uh, make sure the mic's on and uh, oh, not yet. <laughs> Hello, I'm uh, Tom McNamara. I live at uh, 1306 Wakefield. Uh, I teach science at Dow High. Uh, I've taught for 16 years in the Midland Public Schools and uh, 24 years total in education. I want to thank the board for giving me this opportunity to address, to, uh, to address you. Uh, I, um, I, have, I am a fully vested member of the, this uh, school system. Uh, I have seven children. I am a proud parent of a Dow High grad. I have two at Dow High right now. I have one at Jefferson, two at Seabird, and one at ESA. I have athletes. I have band members. I have honor students, and I have a daughter of special needs. Uh, I can't think of anyone who's more vested in Midland Public Schools. Uh, you are my employer and, and a key to my students' success, and my children's success. Uh, I know that some of these issues, these cuts and addresses, are, are, are being made to lessen the burden on children, uh, but uh, those cuts will affect children one way or the other. Uh, the <clears throat> for the first time, excuse me, for the first time in my career, I, <laughs> I wonder about the career choice I made. <clears throat> well, I've got to change topics <laughs> right now. Um, good schools. And um, good schools are the product of parents and students who care and motivated, um, experienced teachers. And Midland Public Schools' greatest asset is its teachers. And the, in this budget process, teachers get the idea that we're, the, we're your, 
your biggest financial liability rather than our biggest asset. And sometimes it's a perspective. Because um, when I said I had seven children, I'm sure a lot of people in here were thinking about the financial liability rather than the way I think of them as my greatest asset. And I would like you to think about that when these budget negotiation things are going on. Uh, also, I mean, from my perspective, the way retirements are going, I'm just thinking I'm improving my odds of having somebody that will take care of me when I'm older. Uh, but the, the other issue that I wanted to um, address was in is the negotiations and contract. When you negotiate a contract and both sides agree, then both sides take ownership of the pluses and minuses that are in that contract. When you impose a contract, you take ownership of all the pluses and minuses. And the pluses and minuses have faces associated with that. Pluses have presidents on them, and the minuses have people in the community. I'm asking for an impossible task. I'm asking you to, to, to solve this problem. But is it any more impossible than you ask of your teachers when you ask them to teach bigger classrooms with fewer resources, more curriculum with less time? And by the way, don't leave anybody behind. Please think about that. Think about your greatest asset when making these negotiations. And please don't leave us behind. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. McNamara was on the uh, list to speak. Is there, are there others in the audience, please? And I just, I'm sorry for interrupting, but just as a reminder for those of you who choose to come up, uh, we'd like to limit it to five minutes so that we can uh, show the same uh, time frame for, for anybody else who would like to speak. It took me three hours to write it, and it took me 45 minutes to edit it, so. I've got it really close. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. My name is Jeannie Townsend, and I live at 4057 Fraser Road, Bay City, Michigan. I'd like to thank the board for demonstrating that they're interested in reaching a fair and equitable contract by scheduling another negotiations meeting on May 22nd. I appreciate the fact that the board could have imposed their last offer, but have chosen instead to pursue additional dialogue with the MCEA in the hopes of reaching terms which address the needs and concerns of all interested parties. As these talks continue, I would like the board to take a number of things into consideration. We all understand that educational financing in Michigan is ever-changing and precarious at best. We are all at the mercy of the state of Michigan for the resources necessary to sustain our existence. Teachers are a have a very practical and unique perspective of this situation because we work in the environment created by its existence every day. We are repeatedly told to do more with less. I have been an art teacher with Midland Public Schools for the past 24 years. The classroom budget that I had this year is considerably less than the budget that I had 23 years ago. And I can tell you that the price of supplies and materials has not decreased during that time. The MCA has offered to make concessions to help improve the financial situation of the district that exceed the revenues lost to the district courtesy of the state. How much money has the district paid for legal services over the past two years dragging out these current negotiations? Currently, the district has a surplus fund balance approaching 18% of their operating budget, and yet Mr. Ellinger continues to stress the fact that the fund balance could quickly be depleted. The teachers have no more control over educational financing than the district has, and yet we are to bear the burden of future financial speculation, and that's all it is, is speculation. The media repeatedly says that teacher salaries are the majority of the district's budget. My question is, in what business aren't salaries the majority of a business's budget? 
Teacher salaries are an ever-shrinking portion of the MPS budget, currently around 60% of the district's total annual expenses. The MCEA is not asking the district to be financially irresponsible and deplete the fund balance, but are rather asking the district to keep things in perspective, and according to the ledger, the district is in pretty good financial shape, a condition myriads of other districts in the state of Michigan wish they were in. Millen Public Schools has the 25th largest student enrollment in the state of Michigan, according to a Detroit News article published March 10, 2011. Of those 25 largest school districts, MPS has the fourth highest surplus fund behind Rochester Community Schools, Farmington Public, and Huron Valley. And at that time, it was only 15% of our operating budget. At our current fund balance, we would have exceeded all but Rochester Community Schools. Given how quickly educational legislation and financing change, MPS needs to be very careful about their financial goal of increasing the fund balance. In the very same Detroit News article, it quoted Senator Jack Brandenburg, Republican from Harrison Township, as saying, Michigan could save $282 million by capturing district fund balances, which exceed 15% of operating costs. I'd love to say with certainty that could never happen, just like the state would never take funding designated for K-12 education and spend it elsewhere. The board cannot bargain on what ifs. If we could see into the future, the district probably would have made some different decisions over the past 24 years or so. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have repeatedly turned back, what was it, 4% of the operating millage approved by voters on a regular basis. Had Midland Public Schools known schools of choice would be implemented, they would have allowed teachers such as myself the professional courtesy of allowing my children to attend Midland Public Schools without request for tuition so that they would have benefited for years to come after schools of choice were in. The point is, we don't know what the financial future holds, and we have to negotiate with what we currently know to be true. If the district were in dire circumstance, I can assure you its teachers would step up and help the district resolve the problem. Teachers have always been there for the district, whenever and whatever the need has been. Other points to consider in terms of negotiating a fair and equitable contract and implications should a contract be imposed are, one, Midland Public Schools is the fourth largest employer in Midland County. If a contract were imposed with a significant salary reduction, the economy of the entire county and surrounding areas would be. Two, teachers in the past have been tremendous cheerleaders for the passage of millages in this district. If an unnecessary salary reduction were imposed, do you suppose that would continue? Three, if the district elects to significantly reduce teacher salaries, you better anticipate a noticeable reduction in classroom resources and materials, which teachers have been routinely supplying for years. In my classroom alone, I personally have supplied an electric miter saw, two angle grinders, two dremels, a commercial paper shredder, metal files and chisels, screwdriver saws, and numerous consumable materials like Kleenex, file folders, and pencils. A pay cut would eliminate my ability and desire to supplement my classroom. Four, if teacher salaries are cut, many teachers will have no choice but to refrain from the cost of continuing professional development unless absolutely necessary to maintain their certification. This will substantially reduce the caliber of your staff. Five, if salaries were to be cut 8%, how many hours beyond your contract a day would you work and how many additional unpaid responsibilities would you voluntarily assume? This year, I have documented on the days I remember to record it, 237 hours of unpaid overtime to date. In conclusion, there are numerous and substantial reasons that Midland Public Schools should find an expedient and fair settlement to this contract. Midland Public Schools has the financial means to do so, and I would hope for all parties concerned they find the wisdom to do so. Thank you. in the viewing audience that would like to speak at this time. If not, we'll move into our, we'll close the public comment and move into our uh, regular agenda. Turning that over to Mrs. Klein for the approval of the summer tax rate, please.
Good evening. Since the resolution has to be read aloud, I won't go into too much detail on it other than to say that this is a necessary item at this time of year. We took action in uh, early winter, late fall, to notify the city that as we have in the past, we'd like them to collect summer taxes on properties within the city. And the resolution specifies the amounts and formalizes the arrangement that, that we've had with them. So it needs to be read aloud, and I believe it will be self-explanatory. And Jerry is filling in for Lynn, so you have the pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Middle Public School Certification of Summer Taxes for 2012. Whereas this Board of Education was authorized by the electors of the Middle Public Schools on May 3, 2005 to assess up to 18 mills of taxable valuation of the school district for 10 years, 2006 through 2015, for the general operating fund, subject to the limitations of Article 9, Section 31 of the Michigan Constitution of 1963 as amended. And whereas Section 1211 of the Revised School Code is amended, provides that the Board of Education of the school district may levy 18 mills of the taxable valuation of non-homestead property within the school district for school operating purposes and exempts principal residents, qualified agricultural, qualified forest, industrial personal, and commercial personal property from such levy. And whereas Section 1211 of the Revised School Code as amended further provides that if the foundational allowance of a school district calculated under Section 20 of the State School Aid Act for the 1994-1995 state fiscal year was more than $6,500 per pupil, such school district may reduce the number of mills from which principal residents, qualified agricultural, qualified forest, industrial personal, and commercial personal property are exempted by up to the number of mills as certified by the Michigan Department of Treasury required for the school district's combined state and local revenue per membership pupil for the school fiscal year ending in 1995 to equal the school district's foundational allowance for the state fiscal year ending in 1995 and may levy that number of mills in succeeding years for school operating purposes on principal residents, qualified agricultural, qualified forest, industrial personal, and commercial personal property subject to certain limitations. And whereas the supplemental millage rate applicable to principal resident, qualified agricultural, qualified forest, industrial personal, and commercial personal property of the Midland Public Schools for the 1994-95 fiscal year was certified by the Michigan Department of Treasury as 5.6523 mills. And whereas the Midland Public Schools has taken the action required by Section 1613 of the Revised School Code as amended to conduct a summer tax levy for 2012 and communicated such action to the City of Midland by letter dated November 15, 2001. And whereas Public Act 38 of 1999 being MCLA 211.39 requires that millage rate assessments be rounded down to four decimal points. Now, therefore, be it resolved that there be spread on the 2012 summer tax roll, a tax levy on the taxable value of non-homestead property of the school district within the city of Midland of nine mills for the general operating fund, and resolve further that there be spread on the 2012 summer tax roll, a tax levy on the taxable value of principal residents, qualified agricultural, qualified forest, and industrial personal property of the school district within the city of Midland of one mill for the general operating fund, and further resolve that there be spread on the 2012 summer tax roll a tax levy on the taxable value of commercial personal property of the school district within the city of Midland of four mills for the general operating fund. And now, there, now therefore, be it resolved that the revenues produced by the above levies for operating purposes result in revenues exceeding or falling short of the limits specified in section 1211 of the revised school code as amended, such difference shall be made up in the school district's next regular tax levy in accordance with such section, such section, and resolve further that the clerk of the city of Midland be and hereby is authorized and instructed on behalf of Midland Public Schools to assess and spread the amounts and only those amounts required by the above mills on the 2012 summer tax roll. Thank you. Roll call. Move approval. Just uh, one correction, if I may. Um, First page, second to the last paragraph, uh, where it notes the date of November 15th, 2011. Um, Mr. Wasserman, it's at 2001. Oh, and I did. I'm sorry. It's easy to do when you're reading <laughs> an entire resolution, but we want to make sure the board adopts what's in writing here, and it should say I, I stand corrected. Uh, uh, letter dated November 15th, 2011. Very good. That correction, I'm over rule. <laughs> Support. <laughs> Moved by Mr. Oley, supported by Dr. Kaminsky. Roll call? <coughs> yes. 
President Malt. Yes. Vice President Wasserman. Yes. Secretary Baker absent. Treasurer Oley. Yes. Member Branstad. Yes. Member Gorton. Yes. Member Kaminsky. Yes. So you have uh, six of six. Thank you. And with that, uh, we'll move on to professional staff evaluation with Mr. Valendi. Thank you, Mr. Malt. Uh, we brought to you uh, a month ago for consideration a policy written by Neola and reviewed by our lawyers that reflects and codifies the uh, new legislation about staff evaluations, and we bring that back to you for action and a, hopefully approval. Lord's pleasure. So moved. Smart. <laughs> Sorry. Say you guys are awake with me tonight. Mm -hmm. Motion by Mr. Washington, support by Mr. Oli. Questions of Mr. Mr. Valendi. If not, we had a discussion in the, in the previous board meeting so that if everybody's recollection is correct, they understand what we're, we're doing with this. With that, we have a motion on the table. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 For those opposed, same sign. You have your motion. Capital projects, Mr. Ellinger. I think we can deal with all these in one motion if that's the board's pleasure, but I'll walk you through all five separate bids. Um, bids have been tabulated and accepted and provided for district painting at Dow High School and Plymouth Elementary School. The work to be performed includes interior painting at these buildings. We recommend issuing a purchase order to the low bidders as, as listed below. The projects, and this is true for all the projects, so I won't repeat this for all five were previously approved by the Board of Education and funding is included in the 2012 capital funds projects. On Dow High School, the bid would go to Thermacol Incorporated, a company here in Midland, Michigan, for $42,610. Plymouth Elementary, again the same company, Thermacol Incorporated here in Midland, $3,130. Moving on to items um, B, bids have been accepted and a tab provided for the district parking lot crack ceiling. Um, ceiling S-E-A-L-I-N-G. The work to be performed includes asphalt parking lot and, and drive crack ceiling at six selected school building sites. The project um, is scheduled and will be completed before the start of the school year. The low bidder uh, is uh, Highway Maintenance Construction of Romulus, Michigan for the amount of $10,477. Um, item number C. Again, bids accepted and a tab provided for the board. This project includes concrete sidewalk and slab area replacement. The project, again, scheduled to be completed before the beginning of this fall. We recommend issuing a purchase order to the low bidder, Steve Kratzer Contracting of Midland, Michigan, in the amount of $12,545. Uh, item D, bids accepted and accepted, uh, accepted and tabulated is provided for asbestos abatement. The work to be performed includes a base abatement of floor tiles at Adams Elementary School. The project, again, to be scheduled and completed prior to the start of the school year. We recommend issuing a purchase order to the low bidder, Diversified Environmental of Bay City, Michigan, for the amount of $21,215. Again, uh, funding included in the 2012 sinking fund projects that were anticipated. <coughs> And then the last item for you this evening, uh, again, bids accepted and a tab provided for district fence repair. This project includes repairs to existing fencing and replacement of damaged chain link fabric. The project, again, scheduled to be completed before the beginning of classes this fall. We would be issuing with board approval a purchase order to the low bidder American Fence Company of Bay City, Michigan for the amount of $4,658. This project was previously approved by the Board of Ed and funding included in the 2012 Capital Projects budget. I move approval of Capital Project items um, A through E. Support. Moved by Mr. Oley, supported by Mrs. Randstad. Um, questions of Mr. Ellinger. These were previously discussed at, uh, on, again, a uh, meeting that uh, talked about the Capital Outlay pro Project. So. If you have questions, now would be the time. If not, pretty straightforward. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. District Safety Excellence Awards, Mr. Ellinger. 
at least once a year, we come and talk to the board. Um, I would like to read a letter that came to me from Mr. Dave Costas. It gives the District Safety Committee great pleasure to inform uh, both me and the board that six district buildings and departments completed the 2011 year without recording any employee injuries. Uh, these buildings are the bus garage, Chestnut Hill Elementary, Franklin Center, uh, Grounds and Maintenance Building, Jefferson Middle School, um, as well as maintenance. This is the seventh year in a row that the bus garage has been incident free regarding employee injuries. I think that's pretty incredible. They're, quite frankly, that's important point of pride for them. And it's something that we compliment them on now for a number of years in a row. It's the sixth year in a row that the Science Center, now the Franklin Center, has been employee accident free. And this is the third year in a row for both Chestnut Hill and Jefferson Middle School to win this award. In addition, Adams Elementary, Central Middle School, and East Lawn Elementary all completed 2011 with only one recorded incident per building. The Accident Investigation Review Committee members uh, presented achievement certificates and gift cards to three of the six incident-free buildings for their accomplishment on April 27th. Uh, Chestnut Hill, Franklin Center, and Jefferson during staff meetings at the building. Um, and then the bus garage grounds and maintenance had theirs presented at a following date. So we're proud of the safety record. Um, when you look at all the reductions that we've made across the district, it's nice and reassuring, I would think, for the board that we haven't compromised people's health or safety while we're making those kinds of tough decisions. So I'm very proud of these groups, the buildings, and the programs for such. You know, our primary mission is to educate our kids, and all you folks do that. But our biggest job is to go home every night the same way we came to work. And so I appreciate the efforts of the safety committee and those folks uh, who have achieved that. And uh, I can't wait for the meeting where we hear every building and every unit went home for the year without any injury and came in the same way, went home the same way they came in. Very good. So Thank Great. With that... 5.5 with the uh, Neola policy. Yeah, in light of recent changes in law that specify additional prohibited subjects of bargaining, uh, administration is bringing to the board, will bring to the board at its May 29th meeting a recommendation for approval of a Neola policy that clearly defines the full powers of the board. You have a copy of that um, included in your packet tonight. Among these subjects are assignments of teachers, layoff and recall procedures, evaluation and observation systems, performance-based compensation and discipline and discharge. The full policy is available to the public for comment prior to consideration of approval, but it's our intent to bring that on the 29th. I would ask Mr. Verlindi if there's anything he wants to add to that. This actual policy was written by Neola and reviewed by our lawyers. It, again, uh, codifies what is the actual language in the law and uh, has been vetted thoroughly. Thank you. And that's for information. <laughs> Curriculum instructions. Dr. Kaminsky, you have some minutes. Yes, it's about a page and a half, but it, it's uh, going to go fairly quick. Um, the Curriculum and Special Services uh, Study Committee met on Monday, April 16th. Uh, members presidents were myself, uh, Lynn Baker, Kathy Ellison, and we met at the Franklin Center of the Science Center. Uh, Randy Shadig. I reviewed two current programs in which science te teachers are working with local business leaders to help connect their instructions with current developments in the business world. MI Tech Plus has been a financial supporter of both of these programs. Uh, one program, healthcare. Uh, Christy Gayhart and uh, Jen Lehman, uh, who both teach eighth grade science at Jefferson, have been working with staff members at Mid Michigan Health to develop an education unit that helps students make connections between the instructional content they learn in class in the real world. Uh, the unit is project-based and requires students to work both independently and together. Students will also learn about some new technologies used at the hospital and some potential career options. Uh, the other solar energy. Uh, science teachers throughout the county attended two solar energy education workshops in the fall to learn how other schools across the country are integrating solar energy into their curriculum. Since then, three engineers from Hemlock Semiconductor have further researched best practice and materials that have been used in their schools, uh, in, in schools rather. Uh, recent, recently, a small group of interested teachers represented each high school in the county, met to review resources and discuss next steps. Another meeting with these teachers is scheduled for early May to continue with plans and impl implementation. Um, uh, we talked about new tech uh, overview and update. 
Uh, Mr. Shadig uh, shared a brief uh, summary of what New Tech High School is and where MPS is regarding its investigation of this particular program. Um, New Tech is a program that is based on three core principles, uh, a culture based on trust, uh, respect, and responsibility, one-to-one uh, -one computing, and project-based learning. Uh, schools that chose to become part of the New Tech uh, network can implement in one of three ways. A uh, school within a school, a separate magnet school, a whole school conversion, uh, which is not an option for us due to the size of our high schools. Uh, currently, MPS is investigating the possibility of implementing a New Tech option for its students. Administrators, board members, community members, and teachers have visited New Tech schools in California, Texas, uh, Indiana, and Pickney, Michigan. An additional trip to Texas is scheduled for early May. MI uh, Tech Plus has been very supportive of investigations uh, so far, and a s staff curriculum uh, development proposal has been submitted to support further investigation next year. Um, we talked about the IB Art Show. Uh, Dr. Ellison informed the committee that the IB Art Show was being held at the a Administration Center, which, is, uh, which was just a few weeks ago, uh, April 20th to uh, 23rd. An open house was scheduled for April 20th. Um, and 28 students uh, presented their uh, materials from both high schools and had over 350 works of art on display. Um, staff and curriculum development proposals. Uh, Dr. Ellison reviewed the staff and curriculum development proposals for this year. She described the process for submitting, uh, how it moves through the steps of review and submission to the Board of Education and to implementation. This year's 23 proposals included four proposals for elementary, two proposals for middle school, nine proposals for high school, and eight proposals for K through 12. Technology submitted three proposals, and there's one proposal to support new tech investigation, and one to continue the investigation of IB in the primary and middle school years. Uh, last subject we talked about, uh, we uh, we had a tour uh, because of the uh, of the uh, the unique uh, place that we were at the science center. We had a tour of the uh, uh, place which the robotics does its training and where it does its meeting uh, with the charge the district's uh, first robotics team, which is led by. Sean Murray from Dow High School. And that is our report. Thank you. Dr. <coughs> Allison, would you like to add to any of that? That was pretty lengthy. No, I, we had an exciting meeting, and uh, I think it was fun to tour the building, and as always, to see the science uh, kits being constructed and to see the robotics there. Thank you. And you have some uh, textbooks for I do, Mr. Malt. I have two textbooks to announce this evening. It's this time of year when uh, the paperwork is completed by staff and forwarded. I have two math books this evening that will be available um, at, on the counter outside my office if anyone would like to see them. And it gives us the opportunity for a 28-day period of examination and questions if anyone has any additional questions. Thank you. Any questions of Dr. Kaminsky or Dr. Ellison? If not, um, before we move into finance, we're going to switch things around a little bit. Um, we're going to move. It's an actual item that is 7.3 for t technology lease. Uh, Mrs. Klein, if you wouldn't mind doing that first, and then we'll go into the gifts. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> and before I do the gifts, uh, Mr. Oli should read the FFO minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. I think would be our, our order. Uh, you may remember when we did the mid-year budget adjustments, I brought you a fairly sizable adjustment. I think the amount was $70,000, and at the time I talked about how the company that had been providing our copier and printer support had gone into bankruptcy late last year. And as a result, we lost our maintenance agreement and needed to do something different. This is related to that. And after a fairly exhaustive study conducted by the business office and the technology department, it's our recommendation that you authorize the superintendent to enter into a new 60-month lease and service agreement with Michigan Office Solutions and Team Financial Group to provide the copiers, the printers, the maintenance, and the supplies for all the buildings in the district. Uh, you may also remember that in past years when we've entered into capital leases, they do show up on our books as both a revenue and an expense item. So we would assume that this will happen in this year. This would be in the final budget adjustment. Uh, they net each other out, <clears throat> but it does artificially inflate the the revenue and the expenditures for the year that we enter the lease. Monthly lease will be $30,687.20. 
And the maintenance costs, which are estimated because they're dependent on actual usage, are $8,112. So the total over the 60 months of the lease would be $2,327,952. This will replace our current lease and the service agreement with American Output and Capital Advantage leasing. And you should know, although it's not directly connected to this action item, we are pursuing legal action against American Output. So that may mitigate the, the costs at some point here, but separate item. Uh, but we need to move ahead, regardless, with supporting our printing and our copying, which are now averaging, this is an astounding figure, 1,629,000 pages per month. That's incredible. So we have tremendous needs, and we just need to make sure that we have the resources in the buildings so that staff can continue to generate the, the papers as they need to with both their printing and their copying. Uh, as I mentioned, the manager of the business office and manager of technology worked together to create a bid. We did bid this, uh, had a number of responses to the bids, and they interviewed three vendors and determined that Michigan Office Solutions uh, with the lease provided by Team Financial would best meet our needs. We were not the only ones left in this position by the American Output bankruptcy, and Bullet Creek and Coleman have already made a move, and they've also moved to Michigan Office Solutions. Thank so you. we would recommend that you authorize the superintendent to go ahead with the lease. Some support. Moved by Mr. Oley, supported by Mr. Wasserman. Um, any questions of... What, what is the increase over what we were paying? Uh, it's a question of over what we were paying before I brought you the adjustment or over the original amount. Well, this contract. Uh, this <coughs> one over what's currently in the budget looks like it will be 50000 maybe 60000 more. And again, that depends on. A year? Uh, yes, per year. Uh, it's, it's more than that if you back out the 70000 that that we had to adjust mid-year, but that was only a partial portion. So had we gone ahead under the existing arrangement, we probably would have doubled that amount. So we would have added 140000 regardless. I'm assuming that we're among many that will be in the line for litigation. Uh, yes, there's a tremendous amount of company among any number of schools and governments around the state. Uh, and it's our attorney's recommendation, they, because of that, that the likelihood of getting something in bankruptcy court is pretty slim, but there are some other avenues that they're pursuing. So we're, we're hopeful that we might be able to recoup some of this. And, and Linda, what, what, is, what, is our, what are our losses? What uh, are they and how much? Really, our, our losses would be the additional cost of maintenance because that was wrapped into the original agreement. And so that 70000 or double that for the year, that would really be our annual losses. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, with us, even with us printing over a million pages per month, I just know from looking at technology plan and, and how we're using technology, we are minimizing the number of, of pages that we're printing, but some of that's inevitable with some of the uh, operations. And so I just see so many things being used electronically to, to minimize that and some of our, our web-based um, programs that, go, that our teachers and our staff is using. So I, I think there are a number of documents that we've tried to move to electronic versions of, but we okay. still do a tremendous amount of copying sure. and printing. One advantage of the technology is that it's able to provide very good reports of what and who and when and so all of our building administrators are now examining their particular buildings records we month by month to see if there's something that they can do to reduce their usage because with this lease it will be very clearly tied to usage if we print less the costs will go down very good this begs the question based on the video we showed at the Gerstecker Awards. <laughs> How much is this is Amy Bushy? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, just kidding, Amy. <laughs> See, I, I knew my figure of 1.6 per month, so I thought, yeah, yeah 80,000. <laughs> <laughs> There's any, plenty to go around. Any further questions or comments? Yeah. 
not, we have a motion on the table by Mr. Owens, supported by Mr. Washerman. All those in favor of the new agreement, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. You have your new contract. Now we'll go to Mr. Oley's uh, FFO yep. report. Yep. Minutes for the FFO meeting from April 26, and copies of the minutes are outside available for everybody who is interested. Um, I'll briefly capsulized, which was, I think, another three hour meeting, if I recall. <laughs> Linda Garriott's work is overtime. It was a short one. Um, Mrs. Klein presented the draft of the 12, 2012 13 budget projections that were discussed at the April 30th uh, Board of Education budget workshop. She began with a review of local, regional, and state demographics and showed how they support the enrollment projections provided by Stanford consultants. So fall 2012 enrollment is projected to be 101 students less than the fall 2011 enrollment. Since there have been three different state school aid bills introduced, three distri district scenarios um, were developed using the revenue forecast from each. The expense assumptions that were used for the workshop include 6.5 additional teaching staff needed as a result of increasing kindergarten to a full day. Uh, another increase in the state retirement payroll tax from 24.4 to 27.3, which comes out to about a 12 percent incre increase in one year. A 1.2 percent increase in medical cost. Um, the estimate will be revised based on the actual expenses from 11-12 through May. A 3 percent increase in cost of insurance. And we, something we just talked about, we talked about an increase in printing and comping costs for the reason that Linda just kind of went through. And uh, all estimates and assumptions will be revised as new information becomes available in the weeks ahead. And then Mr. Valindi gave an update on negotiations with the Midland City Education Association and commented that meetings will continue with the assistance of a mediator. And our next regular meeting will be next Tuesday. Thank you. Mrs. Klein, back to you yeah, for gifts. On to the gifts. And none of these exceed the $5,000 threshold, so they are all for information. They total $15,646.39. And a broad variety of donors. We have the East Lawn PTO providing support for headphones for the computer lab. The Plymouth PTO donating toward an audience response system and some additional clickers, as we call them. The Midland High School Athletic Booster Club providing a softball batting cage. The Adams PTO providing some furniture for the media center. Midland High School Music Parents Association with ongoing support for an accompanist for the choir. Uh, an interesting gift from an individual, Laura Curry. I don't think she would mind my saying this since she attached a note to the gift indicating that she was the winner of the big raffle at the Booster Bash. Hmm. And she donated the proceeds to support the Dow High School softball program. Oh, so that was a, a wonderful gift. They all are, but that was a uh, little unusual circumstances. Uh, then the family of the late Robert Bartlett donated the memorials that were made in his name to support the Midland High School Band and Orchestra programs. Uh, then the Dorothy O. Minical Business Education Endowment Fund at the Midland Area Community Foundation takes the award for the longest name. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mrs. M Ms. Minicle was, I believe, department chair uh, many years ago, and uh, on her passing established an endowment fund that provides support for business education. And this year, the proceeds are going to support two high schools, student participation in the BPA and DECA events. Then the Midland Kiwanis Foundation providing East Lawn fifth grade with a trip to the Henry Ford Museum. Woodcrest PTO had a variety of items on a teacher's wish list. And then Heather Bradley, Sheldon Baker, and Aaron Bradley all made donations to our activity fee scholarship fund. So we're very grateful, broad range of donors. And other than middle school, I think just about every area is represented on the list this time. Thank you, Mrs. Klein. And thanks to all the donors. Uh, it, the list keeps growing uh, seemingly every every board meeting. So, Mr. Valendi, Human Resources. Yes, for information, we're going to pass along some uh, sympathy to the family of Russ Baker, who passed away on April 18th. He began his career with Midland Public Schools in 1965 as the Director of Secondary Education. And upon his retirement in 1993, Dr. Baker was the Midland Public Schools Assistant Superintendent. Also, sympathy to the family of Eileen Jenkins, who passed away May 1st. She served as a bus driver for the Middle Public Schools from 78 to 96. And lastly, to the family of Carolyn Cruz, who passed away on May 8th. 
she taught at plymouth elementary school for twenty years retiring in nineteen seventy eight thank you oh. Mr. and we have uh... two items for action the first uh... due to recent changes in the school code uh... Um, based on legislation that was uh, passed last summer uh, each district in the state of Michigan is required to implement a performance-based compensation system for teachers. And we are recommending uh, board approval of a system in which each teacher who receives a highly effective rating on his or her annual evaluation uh, be rewarded with $150 deposited in a 403B uh, account set up by that teacher. So those who are rated highly effective this year when evaluations are completed would then um, have $150 uh, deposited in their 403B by the end of July. Thank you. And that's an actionable item of support. So moved. Support. Okay, so with me tonight. <laughs> okay, it's a motion by uh, support and support. Uh, from Mr. Wasserman, supported by Dr. Kaminsky on the um, recent change of the revised school code 1250. Uh, any questions of Mr. Valindi? Just one clarification, sure. Gary. Will you? Um, I don't think this is a surprise to the MCEA leadership, is it? Um, I'm not sure that we've talked over the exact amount as we were working it through the board, okay. but they knew that we were going to have a merit, and uh, we had talked in various uh, ways of doing that. So. And Gary, um, while the dates in here don't have a year attached to them because it's generic, correct? Is it this July thirty first the first time, or will it be next year cycle? It would be this coming July thirty first okay. for this year's evaluation, okay. and then it would continue beyond. Gary, if there's you know if there's any additional input, uh, this is the first year that we're doing this. Is that correct? Correct. If there's any additional input on this going through the first year, it can be changed, revisited next year. At your because this is one of our new many changes that are coming through. Right. Okay. And it's just to the start of making sure we're in compliance with that. That we have um, the system, which we are required to do. And um, obviously, um, it is not a huge amount of money. But uh, considering all the, the financial issues that we face, we're going to start out with it. We have a motion and support. Um, any further questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. You have your, your motion. Okay, and the Midland City uh, Education Association, the district, are working very hard and bring to you now a calendar for the coming school year. It's, it's uh, very, very similar to the, the calendar we had for this past year. It has the common vacation times that have been specified countywide through the ESA at spring break and uh, um, at Christmas and the two countywide PD days in October and February uh, with variations then in that calendar that we've agreed on uh, based on our individual needs and our professional development schedule. So uh, we have, uh, again, 174 days of instruction and, again, 186 work days for teachers. And within that, that, those work days, uh, there are 36 hours of professional development uh, as is part of our contract and uh, the mandates of the state. So uh, with that all being said, we will start school in the fall on uh, September 4th, 2012 uh, with our students. Uh, uh, in the classroom, and we will end the school year on June 12, 2013. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Verlindy, I had a question. The, is there, I think, for our teacher parent conferences, those days, elementary, I think middle school and high school has those, it's going to be the same format as last time. I think there's some time during the evening, some time during the afternoon. Right. Those are specified in the calendar. Those, so it's similar to what we did last year? Correct. Okay. Any other questions of Mr. Verlindi? If not, we move. entertain a motion. Move on 8.3. Thank you. Sure. Move by Mr. Watchman, supported by Dr. Kaminsky. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. You have your calendar, and thanks to the MCEA and their involvement in that process. So, um, 
before we get into the correspondence and uh, the rest of the agenda, I would like to announce to everyone in the audience and to those viewing at home, if you're so inclined, um, we will be going into closed session immediately following this open uh, meeting for the purpose of negotiations. So um, I need to make that announcement sooner than later so that you're all aware of the fact that we will be going to closed session. So. Uh, nine, uh, nine point one is the correspondence to and from the Board of Education. Ten is the scheduled activities. And a special note that you'll see that we will meet on May 29th, which is the Tuesday following the holiday. Uh, so mark your cal calendars accordingly. Study discussion, and I'll start to my right with Dr. Kaminsky. Um, you know, really just uh, two items. You know, thank you to the donors. Um, I think it's been a good year as far as the community. Um, contributing and uh, and uh, assisting and being there for the school district and it's great to see that in another good year um, and just the multitude of sources and uh, and generosity uh, and the other last thing just real quick um, I know that uh, the those in our district and the parents and uh, the community really appreciate getting the calendar done in an early fashion so I know that that's gonna be well appreciated so thanks for everybody that worked on that very much appreciated yeah, a couple quick things. Uh, thanks to everybody that came out tonight and show your support for the district. We believe you are uh, coming out and staying for the whole meeting. Um, also want to kind of thank, um, and we probably kind of go over pretty fast, the, uh, the 23 curriculum proposals. It takes a lot of work by a lot of people, investing time to put that together. And it's nice that we're able to allocate $146,000 out of our budget again, which we've done for many, many years, which is a, which is a high priority. So I just want to thank you, Kathy, and all the people that contributed towards, towards those. We probably don't spend enough time talking about those and the importance of those going forward. Congratulate um, all the buildings who do an outstanding job on safety. And you're right, we probably don't do enough. Some of us are in industries where we talk about safety every single day, and we can never take that for granted. That, that's really at the top of the list. Um, shout out to, to Lori Curry again for her very generous donation. It was very nice of her to do that. I also wanted to comment about Russell Baker, and at least from a board perspective, I know people sitting over here had worked with Russ. I had the opportunity to work a couple years with, with Russ back in my early years on the board. And, I remember more than one conversation where he very clearly served as a, as a mentor to me to kind of, he had a lot of wisdom and a lot of experience and I appreciate the fact that I had the opportunity to be able to, to learn from him for a couple years before he formally retired, but he certainly was active for many years after that as well. Also wanted to kind of give a shout out um, to the um, four Chris Jack Award winners from last Thursday night and as we all know that that and graduation are the highlights of our year and it was a tremendous event and I appreciate all the work of Vi and, and her team and uh, Kathy Hawkins, Legault, and um, while those four people got recognized as they deservedly show, there's an awful lot of people. If you look at the long list of people that have been nominate, nominated, not just this year, but past years, who would probably deserve that award as well, kind of thing, and we're limited to four per year, but uh, it's always kind of a very inspirational kind of thing, so I just wanted to kind of call out um, those four people and, and thank them for their many years of service and their excellence and for kind of paving the way for, for all of us going forward. So that's all I got. Thank you. Not to be too repetitive with a lot of Ricks, but I uh, also knew Russ Baker and, and sad to see his passing and he put, uh, contributed a lot to this district through the years and he's kind of an icon around town with all of that. So uh, sympathies to the family on, on Russ's passing. Um, also thanks for the collaboration on the calendar and getting that done early, quickly, so we have certainty going forward next year. Uh, to the Gerstacker Award winners, congratulations. And to their families, congratulations. I think the most touching part of that ceremony uh, is, is how the teachers appreciate their peer recognition, but even more so how much their families revel in their, their teacher, spouse, slash parent being recognized. And that's always a very uplifting thing to see. And my last thing on the, in terms of safety, it's uh, prom and graduation season. It's going to be 80 degrees tomorrow, supposedly. Uh, people are going to start getting antsy, and so I hope uh, all of our keep our attention on the ball with our young people in terms of driving and their, their activities coming up this spring that we all go home safe and sound. Angela. Thanks. Um, two things. I attended my first Gerstacker Award ceremony, and it was fabulous. And not only just for the teachers that received the awards, I was so impressed with the presentations that were put on and all the effort that their coworkers go to to put on these presentations. It was outstanding. Um, and then I also, I had forgotten until it was brought up, I attended the IB Art Show, and that was phenomenal to see. I'm not an artistic person, and it just amazes me what um, these students can do. And that would be all. 
Well, I think everything's just about been said, but I'd just like to thank everyone for coming tonight, and it's nice to see so many students. I hope you enjoyed the meeting. <laughs> And if you did, then we need to, we need to talk later. <laughs> um, I'm going to. Uh, Lynn sent me a message uh, late this afternoon, and she wanted to just to say congrats to the MHA, uh, MHS musical Anything Goes, uh, an outstanding job by all, both those in the play and those who supported it and uh, were there. She also wanted to congratulate the Gerstacker winners. She was not able to be there this year, uh, but uh, sends her congratulations on. And she was thoroughly, uh, thoroughly enjoyed the new tech experience that uh, went to Texas on behalf of Midland Public with teachers, administrators, board members uh, to examine another opportunity in Texas that um, uh, lends itself to the investigation that Dr. Kaminsky uh, alluded to earlier. So um, she was uh, very positive and excited about how that uh, may come to Midland Public at some point in the future. Um, my own comments, I'll make them brief. I am um, I am encouraged, as Mrs. Townsend spoke to earlier, and I am also encouraged the fact that we have another negotiation session set up for later this month, um, and that's always good when people are still talking. So I'm, I'm encouraged. Um, I do too, uh, I did uh, also uh, to attend the IB Art, uh, phenomenal talent uh, from the entire program uh, representing middle and public schools. Um, and I have um, a vested interest this year in the prom uh, at the Malt household. But I would uh, uh, wish everyone safe, uh, a safe evening and uh, thank all the parents and staff members who are part of that experience. Uh, with that, I will entertain a motion to go into closed session. Carl, Oops, I'm sorry, Carl. <laughs> My, uh, due to the motion. But my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to expedite things. <laughs> Just a couple of things to clarify. Um, Dr. Ellison and I went, I think we're the only other people other than Lynn in this room that uh, went on the New Tech trip down to Texas. Uh, thanks again to My Tech Plus for offsetting virtually uh, almost all the expenses for that trip. Um, that was not a cheap endeavor. There were 15 of us that traveled uh, down there. We've been to a number of states now to look at New Tech programs. So what I would tell you is there's a lot of New Tech Kool-Aid floating around the community. And uh, New Tech is a program, but in concept, it provides a structure for how we could do project-based learning in the district that has rubrics that are measurements and assessments of the, that project-based learning. And it brings business people into teachers' classrooms to help assess that. And it creates presentation skills that students have that are consistent when they present these projects. So there's a lot there to get excited about. We are far from making any decision that we're going down this path. And I don't mean to minimize what new tech can do when I refer to it as new tech Kool-Aid. But people can get overly excited. And our teachers who have actually been on two trips that I've had the fortune to attend heard me say this, that if we can't convince our teachers that this is a good option for us to go down and, and another program offering that we can do and fund that in a way that doesn't put more pressure on our general fund, we probably won't go down the path um, at this point in time. Uh, but there's a lot to be learned from watching how Meridian has kind of embraced this and what they're doing. They're nervous about it. Um, I heard a presentation this morning. Um, they have downsized the number of students that they want to um, introduce to it. They were going to introduce uh, initially their freshmen and sophomores in one year, and now they're just going to do their freshmen. So we have a lot of investigative work to do, which is why it was characterized in the, uh, the curriculum notes that you heard this evening. The way it was, we have another year to continue investigating this should we use, need, feel that we need that amount of time. The other thing is as a district, we have to get a skin in the game. If we're going to request from our um, uh, the typical partners outside the school district to help us some funding for this, we have to have something to show for it. And this board talked for the first time at the uh, work session the end of April about what millages um, uh, could be facing this district. We're going to go through a period where for three years in a row we have to request just the normal millages that are coming up. Either operating millage uh, from the state of Michigan or hold harmless millage, any potential renewal of an enhancement millage. And that doesn't even address what might be most important, and that is sinking funds to maintain the facilities that we have. Because we're coming off a 10-year period to, um, of a 55, almost a $55 million sinking fund. 
uh, much less what we can do to still find money to move technology down the uh, continuum to really stay a progressive district. So we have some homework to do, but even with the finances that confront the district, I don't think we have to put more pressure on that when we talk about new tech, and I just want people to hear that directly from me. Um, the other thing is a, kind of a shout out and a congratulations to our two high schools because uh, some people know that U.S. News and World Report came out uh, just last week and they ranked our high schools. Um, the criteria they use for being career and college ready is a little different than what we typically speak of when we talk about how our high school per, uh, students perform on the ACT. So you have to keep that in mind, but based on the criteria that uh, this magazine uses, Dow High School was ranked the 32nd best high school in the state of Michigan and number 13, 17 in the nation. And Midland High was ranked number 48 in the state and number 17, 12 in the nation. When you look at the last data that I've been able to see from, I believe it was the 9, 10 school year, both our high schools, when you look at our average ACT score and uh, students doing well on all four major components of the ACT test, still have both high schools in the top 5% of high schools in the state of Michigan. That's a really great place for us to be, and that's a strong statement for all the employees that work here, but particularly our teachers. So that's some data that I wanted to share with you this evening. The other thing, and I think Dr. Kaminsky alluded to this, when you look at our gifts, it continues to amaze me in my fifth year in the district that in total we have had people in this community step up with gifts that total $295,000. $814. You know, it's not beyond the realm to think we'd have almost a third of a million dollars donated by people in this community for direct things that impact kids. I think that's just really incredible. I'd like to end the meetings by talking about students, and there's quite a list um, that we can talk about tonight, so I want to jump right into that, and then you can move into your motion for closed session, uh, Mr. President. Um, Kemic salutes. Congratulations to Nick Mammel, who was named the Saginaw Valley League Hockey Player, the most valuable player of the year. Kudos to all of the Midland High School Big Brother, Big Sister volunteers. Over 50 Kemics gave of their time to meet once a week with their little brother and little sister this year. That makes a strong statement amongst, about the kind of students that we serve. Jefferson Middle School, congratulations to their Science Olympiad team who took third place at the regional level. Back to Dow High School, congratulations to the marketing students who were chosen as finalists for the 2012 International Credit Association of Eastern Michigan Creative Writing Contest. Dow High School attended the District Band Festival in March, and the judges rated um, the gold, green, and symphonic bands with all ones, so congratulations to them. Plus, the uh, Dow High um, Orchestra attended the District Festival, and they were rated all ones for their performances as well. Um, congratulations to Lori Kraut from Adams Elementary for being awarded the Harold Peterson Award for Excellence in Teaching from Saginaw Valley State University. Congratulations to Mary Jo Griffin, who was chosen to receive a scholarship from the Dow Chemical Company. And Mary Jo will attend a professional development opportunity at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. this summer. That's an incredible opportunity for her. Um, back at Dow High School, students continue to score well on state and local math competition tests of approximately 10,000 students who took the Michigan Mathematics Prize competition, 29 Dow students ranked among the top 1,000 and qualified for taking part two. David Reed scored among the top 200, and Daniel Zhao, is that how you pronounce the last name? <laughs> um, scored among the top 100. Uh, in the Saginaw Valley State University Math Olympics, as a school, Dow won its first place for the Level 2 Team Award and first place for the Combined Team Award. Uh, through the dedicated work of Sean Murray, I think one of you alluded to this earlier, Dow continues to earn high recognition on the Michigan Mathematics League. This year, Dow was first in the region, eighth in the state for all schools, and fifth in the state when only public schools are considered. Um, Jefferson, all eighth grade students participated in a recent reality store. So a huge thank you to the over 70 volunteers in this community that step up to make that event really an excellent learning experience. Again, back to Dow, congratulations to Amy Bushy, who won the uh, National Forensics High School Outstanding Speech, Debate, and Theater Educator Award for the state of Michigan. This is a once-in-a-career recognition for Mrs. Bushy, and it's a, really an appreciation of her dedication and service as a speech educator. Congratulations to the staffs of the Update, Update Online and Yearbook at Dow. They received 32 individual awards in both the newspaper and website 
Each received a Spartan Award and the yearbook received a Silver Award. So congratulations to their sponsor, their journalism teacher, Cami Hall, and her students. And then of a general recognition nature, on April 28th, uh, MPS students participated in the Michigan Industrial Technology Education, the Mites Association, Regional Craftsmanship Fair held in Mount Pleasant. Each project represents many hours of work, knowledge, and skill. And from Dow High School, the CAD program had first, second, third, and honorable mention students. From Midland High School's welding program, they placed students that were first and second place winners, quite a number of them. From Jefferson Middle School, their computer design class were first place winners. So congratulations to all these talented and skilled students and to their teacher, Steve Last, and Cor Corey Pol Pollock. Um, Dow High School, three DECA members from HH Dow High School recently traveled to Salt Lake City, Utah for international career and development competitions. 15,000 DECA students from over the world competed in in that international competition. We had some students that even placed in the top 10 sports and entertainment marketing students in the world. So talk about some world-class measurements and what we do here at MPS. That's an example of how that can happen. And congratulations to this year's Saginaw Valley League student athletes, uh, Daniel Zhao and Bridget Karsten from Dow High School and David Walter and Maura McAfee from Midland High. Uh, this year's Saginaw Valley uh, Teachers of the Year are Jen Sisko, I think a lot of people in the room know that, and Karen Martin from Dow High School. And congratulations again, I want to add my congratulations to this year's Gerstacker winners. We haven't really named them yet this evening. They are Amy Bushy, Penny Church, Tracy Mogenberg and Mary Zietler. Um, Zietler, pardon me. Congratulations also, also to Mrs. Lombardo and the casting crew of Anything Goes. Um, I saw the performance on Saturday night along with my family and it's incredible to see. There were, I think someone told me, over 100 kids involved in that drama. And uh, that's a huge undertaking for some of us that are of an age where we really know what that play is about. And I'll tell you, Mrs. Lombardo is one uh, smart recruiter because the number of those kids were underclassmen, freshmen, and, and sophomores. That drama program is in good hands for years to come. So congratulations to her. Thank you. There you go. Now I would entertain. And again, my apologies, Carl. Uh, Unneeded. Uh, so moved to go to closed session. Support. Roll call. President Malt. Yes. Vice President Wasserman. Secretary Baker absent. Treasurer Oley. Yes. Uh, Member Brandstadt. Yes. Member Gorton. Yes. Member Kaminsky. Yes. Passes 6-0. Six, 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 oh. We'll stand adjourned for five minutes.